Welcome, Mr. Kiras, Mr. Zhangian, as you let me to call you. Uh, thanks for joining. We are proud to welcome you. Thank you very much. I'm so happy to be here. Meraba. Wow. <laughs> yes, Meraba. Uh, welcome. It is our first chapter in English with you. Uh, we have recorded 27 uh, chapters before. It is our 28th, I think, 28 or 29 will be bro broadcasted. So uh, happy to have an international star of cello here with us and a good uh, newly graduated uh, cellist, Ülker, is with us. Uh, she has graduated last night, I think. Is it correct, Ülker? Yeah, the night before. Yeah. Yes. yes, and I can say... Uh, first, I will start by saying it's such an honor to be in your series. I think it's such a wonderful project, and I'm honored to be the first one in English. Uh, and uh, yes, I want to say Ulke graduated uh, two nights ago, and it was a stellar moment. People were ecstatic, and uh, it was so impressive, such an honor to have her in the class for more over than four years, huh? Five years. Five years, my God. And she really, you know, skyrocketed into the stardom. I should uh, thank to Dilba Tokai, uh, her ex-teacher. Uh, in a, one of the previous chapters, she was our guest and she recommended to contact with you for this series. And I'm very thankful to her also uh, to make this connection first. Uh, as in the recording, uh, she's a wonderful friend to us, Dilba. Uh, so I would like to start uh, this uh, chapter with you about the Turkish cello pieces. What uh, have you played? What's happened? But first of all, I should uh, explain what we are doing here. Maybe some of our Mm, uh, viewers would not uh, know what we are doing. We are uh, recording uh, Turkish cello history here as performers and the composers, composers cello pieces. So we have come to a point which is 321 pieces we have found today. We have reached 321 since the uh, late 19th century to to date, 2021, we found 321 Turkish composers' pieces for cello, various various types of pieces. So you are uh, one of the performers who played one of them, and we want to talk about it also with you. So um, I would like to ask you uh, how you involved this project first. Mr. Uh, Mr. Jean <laughs> yes, thank you so much. So uh, first, because you mentioned it, yes, I want to, to pay tribute and, and, and tell all my admiration to your to your teacher from from uh, Diba, okay. exactly Diba. Yeah, she she I'm I'm in great admiration because I think uh, the teachers who form the the first teachers, you know, the first second teacher, the ones in in the youth they are the most important. They are the ones who will actually uh, decide whether the relationship between a young cellist and the instrument will be good or not and will be trustful. And, and uh, so far, the young cellists I've seen coming from her class are always uh, very healthy, very, a very good relationship to, to the instrument and to music in general. So I just wanted to tell my admiration. Now, I want to say this is such an amazing project that you started and that you and that you are not only started, but as you said, my God, so many pieces that we don't know and that I have no idea of. So I will be a bit like a tourist here today because uh, um, but but I want to say it's such a fantastic uh, project because uh, you were asking me, you know, how I. Uh, 
uh, came in touch maybe with this with this music with this uh, with this uh, repertoire and actually my first encounter with uh, with Turkish music is is through I, I have a group uh, of so-called world music where uh, so it's a project we call, we call it phrase because it's encompassing many different countries and uh, we are four players there are two percussionists two melodic instruments and in this context we play also some and I know this it's not the subject of today but I wanted to mention it I, I, we yes. play some traditional tunes from Turkey and uh, and this came because the the player uh, of, of Lira, of Greek Lira, he's a Greek guy, Socrates Sinopoulos, he's an amazing musician, but uh, even he's Greek, but he learned from a Kemanche uh, uh, master uh, from Turkey, because he says all the great masters of this music, of traditional music, are Turkish. They are, and that's why he went there, he had a master from Turkey, and he went there, he spent years, you know, learning from that. And then, of course, he brought some tunes. And so we played some tunes from there. So for me, it was interesting. And I think it's probably the first time that I enter a, 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 a musical world aesthetic through, first through the traditional branch. And then only after this, I came to uh, encounter and starting a little bit to meet the classical Turkish repertoire for cello. What was the year that you have encountered uh, this uh, project, Kemanche? The, the, the Kemanche. This I started a long time ago already because we we started doing this project already at least fifteen years ago. It could be twenty years ago, and we have been touring with it. We did a CD with it, which is called Phrase. And uh, now it's um, so successful. We, we started a second program, which is called Beyond Phrase, that we are starting to play uh, around. And, and so it's, I've, I've been so, sort of tasting this, this music and some Turkish musical colors for many years through this project. Can you describe the taste? Because, because you mentioned it. Mm -hmm. Yes, very good question. Very good question. Uh, First of all, I want. I think I, it's very humbling always to try to put words on music, because as Victor Hugo said, music starts when the words cannot uh, anymore express what you want to express. But Good. nevertheless, I absolutely uh, love your question, and um, I would say uh, the f the first adjective that comes to my mind is sensuality. I think it's a, it's a music that is extremely um, um, yes, sensuous, and maybe this it has this in common with French music, and maybe late th that that brings me. I'm just thinking aloud now, but maybe it's not by chance then that that a composer like like Saigun, we will talk about him later, but that he went to France to to you know to to that he was attracted to by this musical musical culture. But um, so to come back to your question, sensuality, the of course. Uh, the, the, the rhythms were very interesting for me, but of course this is something one could say in general about traditional musics, because since they are modal uh, rather than harmonic in the Western sense, the, therefore there is a sort of shift of, of importance and the, the, the rhythmical complexity is, is, is quite rich and it's, it's quite... Uh, uh, dance and and so the the rhythm is playing a key role and maybe that's one of the things that, that attracted me uh, because when I was a kid uh, I for a while I wasn't sure I said well if I'm not if I won't be a cellist later I will be a percussionist so I was I've always been fascinated by rhythm and by percussion and um, and and in all these tunes that we play as I said we are two melodic instruments and two percussionists and uh, and the percussions play always a very central role in these musics. Without them, it's just that there is almost nothing comes to life. Okay, thanks. Many, many. Then uh, we, we come to how you have uh, get familiar to Saigon's music. 
what 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 was the story of it? Can you tell us? <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> Here's the story. So it's thanks. It is really and it's really thanks to my students, to my Turkish students, uh, Poyras was yes, uh, my, uh, exactly yeah yeah wonderful cellist who is yes. playing I think in the Borussia uh, Orchestra yeah and Ulker and they both brought with them this piece which I if I'm not wrong is is now part of the central repertoire for a Turkish cellist I yeah. think that makes sense it's a, like a classic I think yeah exactly so it, I think it's for you guys a bit like for us WC Sonata or something yeah. like for a French cellist you know it's like uh, mm -hmm. inevitable mm -hmm. and they both brought this and I was um, of course very very touched very fascinated by by the the extraordinary poetry of this music and 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 then when I saw an opportunity to learn it and put it in a in a program, I decided to to go for it under the guidance of Ilka. I, I, you know, when, before the first time I played it, I played it for you, <laughs> and Ilka said, "Well, you know, the rhythm there." And, uh, <laughs> you know, she was she's tough. You know, no, 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 no. But no, but but it was very very um, interesting for me to have her feedback, and that's that's how I came to to meet this piece. You are my one of uh, role models to show to my students that you have always courage to uh, try to learn new musics. That's why I always give my example as you to my students, my cello students, because you always try something new, new, new. You don't stop. You never stop to uh, pioneer this uh, lovely instrument. I'm thankful to you about this. Uh, so uh, have you... Uh, heard something else about just not the solo cello sonata of Saigon also he has a piano cello sonata also he has a cello concerto have you heard these musics before yes uh, so uh, not before I got to know the solo sonata but since I played the solo sonata I listened uh, to this piece and and I find them really very very beautiful too uh, very interesting uh, uh, of course, the, the solo sonata is easier to program and to propose to promoters. So I, I'm going to play it now uh, in the fall. I'm going to play it in Canada. Uh, I'm going to play it in Japan because I'm, I'm playing some solo recitals. And I'm now at the moment, I really want, now that I got the taste of it, and, and I really want to propose it everywhere. because I, Are you uh, planning to play whole five movements or just s some of cellists play a few uh, movements of the piece? Are you playing whole of it? No, I'm playing absolutely all of it. Uh, yeah. and, and that's what I've done from the start. That's what I'm going to do because I love, I love the, the, the piece as a whole. I think the architecture of it works really beautifully. And um, of course, I understand that some people play, particularly this uh, the fourth a, moment. Yes, yes, yes. Such a beautiful tune as an encore or as a as a little piece when you are um, on a show or something. Uh, but but in a recital, yes, I like to play the whole sonata, uh, and and it's very very unusual form uh, that works. Absolutely beautifully, and I, I will tell you something else about how strong this piece is. Uh, when the, the few times I've played it now in recital, most of the time the, the comments I get after the concert, um, enthusiastic comments are about discovering this piece and how strong it is, and how and it's so even if I played in the same program as as Kodai Solo Sonata or something, you know, such strong pieces. It's not like people will say, oh, nice piece, but you know, of course, it's not what I know. Not at all, not at all. People really say, wow, it's, it's really proposing something. It has a, an identity, it has a, a, a world. It, it's really, and that's what I like in music when a composer really creates like a world that you enter, you know, like if you would enter a, a, a fairy tale, you know, and you start and there is a story and there is, drama there is a, a moment of tenderness there is a, a, everything you need 
John Gian, do you think uh, it makes you uh, feel more familiar to Saigon's pieces that that's why he has educated in France and French way? Do you think it's it uh, affects your feelings or French viewers or French listeners? Do you? Uh, but you well, said it's yeah. it's very it's very informal and unusual forms. You just said about uh, Saigon's pieces. What I'm just trying to understand what takes you there, what makes you uh, curious about it, what makes you want to play it. Yeah. Well, um, that's thank you. That's such a great question. I, I two things come to my mind regarding this. First of all, I think probably you are right. Probably it's it's not that I thought about it, but probably there is some some. French flavors, you know, like Takemitsu also took from his studies in, in Paris. Like, so it's so funny for me when I when I play a piece by Takemitsu in, in Japan, you know, and, and then and then I hear some harmonies and I say, oh yeah, that's that's Messian there, you know, it's mm-hmm. uh, it's uh, or it's uh, it's or Boulanger or whatever. Mm-hmm. So it's fascinating. And and in Saigon, it wasn't it was not that as obvious as with. Takemitsu, for example, but I think probably there is some some accessibility for me, something that makes it very accessible uh, unknowingly because because uh, there is a, a common uh, factor here that I also musically I, I I some of my education is French and and of course I speak French and as we know the language and the music are related and 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 it's and it is so important. Um, and the other part of your question, I find also very, very interesting. I, this, I would say, it's more the intuition about what takes me to the world of Saigon. Why do I want to play it? Why do I? So I am, in the end, I, I love to, I love to analyze and to understand. So, so as my students know, because sometimes you know, I start in the lessons, you know, to talk to them to analyze and talk about how it's constructed and everything, but because it helps me to enter the world. But even though I'm, I, I have a certain fascination for analyzing a piece, I would say I'm more, I am a gut musician. I mean, I need to, first, I need to feel that, that, mm-hmm. that, that it's speaking to me. So, um, and, and, and it's, let's say, Saigon has a very evocative quality to it. I mean, when you start this, you know, this, this pedal of C at the beginning of uh, this Orgelpunkt, they say in German, of C at the beginning, you know, in the first phrase and that, we, that you will find, of course, at the end of the piece. And all that. So he, he, he is very inviting. He is very, he invites you to, to first of all, to this sort of, of uh, almost meditative quality but which, which very quickly erupts mm-hmm. into these double stops yeah. after like one minute. So it's very interesting, this mix of, of something that seems to start very, uh, like, like almost like a, uh, an, an Indian uh, bones, you know. Who okay, know Eastern it. knowledge, huh? Yeah, the yeah. Ancient, like it, the old yeah. philosophy. Yeah, yeah. but then, then the, Maybe that's what you feel, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and then yet, and yet there are these, eruption quite quickly that that suggests something burning underground and and this i think this uh, fire and ice uh, sort of contact quite quickly at the beginning of the piece makes it very appealing okay as i see you're connecting with the piece actually you you want to hear it you want to see the shape you want to see the form and but i want to ask another question about the turkish composers Do you know any other Turkish composer except Saigon? Now, now comes the super embarrassing moment. I mean, uh, uh, Ulke, you know, uh, suggested me to listen to some things, and I, 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 at the moment, I, I haven't really taken the time to enter to get to know one of these composers, and 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 I want to, I want to, but no, let let's just leave it like this: that I'm a total beginner. A curious one. I, I I'm looking forward to to. to you play. are a brave one, Jankiras. Yeah, and you're so. You are, you are a brave one. Curious. Sorry. 
We are thankful about what you've done and what you're going to Can you uh, guess how many composers we have found who has composed for cello, Turkish cello composers? Can you make a guess? And is, that said, the, is, is that said the pieces numbers? But he's asking the composers now. Oh my. I'm going to do <laughs> it. Uh, well, if there are 300 pieces, 300 song pieces you found, Let's say, uh, I don't know, 50? 149. <laughs> Three times bigger than that. Uh, we, when we have started this project, uh, end of January, the number was, the, uh, the, the pieces number was under 200. And the composer's numbers was about 110, 10, 120. No. Yes, something like that. But now we have found 149 composers. Wow. So when you find the 150th, you're going to open a bottle of champagne, no? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Then I believe we're going to have a big party when we say it's all, it's finished. Yes, yes, it's yes. It's a long I mean, way. It's a long way. Yes, yes. It's uh, such big project yes uh, so we like to uh, ask your idea about uh, any other turkish composers pieces would you like to play or would you like to research would you like to hear uh, besides saigon yeah any so um i guess what i would like to do now that i got the little uh, first step of initiation through this what I would call a masterwork through this this small masterwork by Saigu in this this uh, partita. Um, I think, thanks to your project, I will I will want to to, to go and and uh, listen to more repertoire, uh, a lot of repertoire, look at scores and everything. And then my ideal, I would love to for, to have actually um, a whole recital. With, with Turkish music. That's, I would love to do something like this, a project like this, and then propose it, you know, propose it, uh, you know, in Turkey. Of course, that would be an immense honor if I dare, if I dare someday to play this music in, in Turkey. And, and, and over here- and It would be an honor for us too. Oh, but thanks. Be, thanks. And there is many uh, Turkish composers who has influenced by French music in our past. Mm -hmm. And okay. now, who are many living composers, who, who has many, many different uh, tastes or styles we have. 149 composers is a lot, a very diverse world we have. So we would like to introduce you, that world to you uh, with pleasure, because they are all completely different uh, pieces, concertos, sonatas, uh, many pieces for four cellos, eight cellos. You wouldn't uh, make a whole group. They are completely di diverse. Uh, there, there's many, many tastes we have in our Turkish cello history. Uh, most of them are also uh, are contemporary uh, composers. They are alive. They are young composers. We have many, many pe uh, people female composers, male composers. We have very diverse life in Turkey, believe me. And we will be uh, very honored to present them to you. Fantastic. I look forward to this. Okay. I have to ask this too. Uh, what, how did you make your lessons during the pandemic? Now it's getting more easier to challenge or live with it. But what did you do for this last year? How did you do your lessons? Um, we were very lucky over here at the Hochschule in Freiburg, the university here. Uh, there were only a few weeks, I think something like, so the, because of the, the lockdown, we postponed the semester, which started in April. So we started it a bit later. There were a few weeks which were uh, online. And then we, after just a few weeks, after three or four weeks, I think, after a month, we were allowed to start uh, teaching in presence. Mm -hmm. So um, therefore, and 
uh, therefore I didn't have to really learn to teach online. And to, to be honest, so far I haven't found a good way. So in, in this little time with the students, what we did is that I invited them because I found the, the Zoom teaching so difficult uh, because I'm a very intuitive teacher. I like to react to the sound and things, and so it was very difficult. So, so I would ask uh, my student to send uh, a video of something. It didn't have to be a whole movement, whatever they had ready or not, or even not ready, if it's, even if it's work in progress, uh, to send a video. I would look at it, uh, prepare myself, and then we would have a conversation over Zoom uh, to talk about it. And I would tell them what I had to tell them. So I know that some colleagues, um, for example, my former teacher, you know how fan I am of, of Tim Eddy, my teacher in, in New York. He, he has taught almost a whole year. He's at the Juilliard School. He told me he found a great way to teach online, to teach through Zoom. Mm -hmm. um, I, 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 didn't, I didn't find this, this so far. I, I found it very difficult. I would love to have Ulka's feedback about this. Did you have- That's what I was ways? wondering, actually. Thank yes, you. yes. Did you have from other corners or something? Uh, did you see some solutions regarding this? Regarding right. teaching actually, online? with you, like it's exactly as how he said, it's really reacting to the sound and how we do come into the cello. And it's, it's those are the things that it's really impossible to see from outside. Like if you're from the internet, it was really hard. I remember once I sent, like, we made a Zoom lesson and it was nice and like a very nice <laughs> lesson with Jang. <laughs> and then he asked me to like send a video and I sent like one minute video. And then we had a lesson of 45 minutes just talking about my one minute. <laughs> and it was like, it was also intense, but it, the greatest thing was he was here all the time, his concerts. Normally he is a lot away playing concerts. And in Corona time, it like it, there were a lot of concerts which were canceled which was incredible for us that we had like amazing time with him and we had a lot of lessons. So we would practice much more than usual in order to be ready for the next lesson because it, which was very soon. So for us, the Corona time was such a, like in this way, at least it was a blessing for us and to have him. Yeah, and I, 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 I'm always careful when I say this because we, we both are aware, mm -hmm. we are all aware of how many people have, have suffered under this corona circumstances and the consequences and everything everywhere and still are but uh, it was the same for me it was it was actually very rewarding to have much more time with you guys mm -hmm. and and so it made me uh, think for the future so I'm tr I'm trying now with my agent and with people who help organize my concert life to try to uh, to have more space for the teaching and, and because I, I see how important it is, uh, the, 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 the presence. Yeah, as you mentioned about the feature, what are the plans? What's your schedule? Can we, the weavers, where can we listen to you? How can we listen to you? Where are we gonna watch you? Okay, uh, the, oh, that's a tough question. I didn't prepare myself for this one. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think, First of all, uh, sadly, I'm not sure. I don't think I have any fixed plans to come to, to Turkey, yeah, which makes me so very sad. sad. So I have, to, I have to tell my agents to work on this. We can work uh, on this. We should work because on this. I, I, miss, I miss Turkey very much. Um, and then, so uh, in terms of online concerts uh, or uh, streamings, um, and I'm quickly thinking what the next concerts, if they are streamed, uh, not not streamed. I don't. I I I have to be honest. I don't know. So uh, let me put we it can, that way. We can, we can tell this. Uh, excuse me. Uh, you have website and you have social media accounts, and you're gonna announce announce them from there, and they can follow you. How can they reach you on the net? We can we can yeah. tell the keywords. Jangian Kiras. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. So, so thank, you, thank you so much. Yes. Uh, uh, so with social media, I have had my ups and downs. And now, I'm, for example, I'm in a break. Uh, it's been a month that I 
just stopped uh, to, uh, posting, but it's just because I was taking care of my students. And, and you have to help uh, yourself. Exactly. So, but yes, uh, when there is a stream concert, uh, usually I post it on my Instagram and Facebook mm -hmm. and that's the best way and my Instagram uh, name is very simple it's my last name and my initials so Keras JG Keras I'm down. Okay. all attached uh, and, uh, and otherwise if you type my name jean Diane Keras on Facebook you, you see it and, and so yes I will announce when I have a stream concert great I highly recommend the viewers to watch you because there is some advantages and disadvantages on new media. You can complain about the losing the physic facts between you and the sound, the player, but the viewers can easily watch you and can understand you, can enjoy the music with the advantages of the new media. But we all uh, have a dream to hug by each other freely again. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you uh, for joining. Do you have anything to uh, add? Do you, do you guys? You guys are so bright. Let me tell you this. You guys are so bright and sparkling, motivating and high energy. Thanks for this. Uh, well, no, I want to say thank you. And I want to try to say, uh, <laughs> Hosh uh, <laughs> Many things. Many, many things. We are glad to host you in this series. It will be a historical, uh, historical um, uh, chapter for us to uh, welcome you here. I'm really thrilled to see you here with Ulker, a new graduated your student and a good, very good cellist with us. Thank you for joining us. Uh, I would like to say bye bye. <laughs> bye, bye. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you.